Number 79, how high will water rise in a glass capillary tube with a 0.5 millimeter radius? All right, so basically letter A is talking about capillary action. In order to do this, we need to know the capillary action formula. All right, it's over there on the right. So it says that the height a certain fluid will obtain in a small tube will equal two multiplied by the surface tension of the fluid, multiplied then by cosine of the contact angle of the fluid and the uh, wall of the tube, multiplied then by the density of the fluid, multiplied by gravity, and then multiplied by the radius of the tube. So we have everything we really need. The only thing we got to look these numbers up on a, you know, either look them up in the book or they should be given them. I doubt you'll have to memorize them, but maybe you might have to memorize the surface tension of water. I chose to choose, I, I chose to choose, <laughs> I chose the um, uh, surface tension of water at 20 degrees Celsius. You could, you know, feel free to use zero or whatever, but standard is basically 20. So here we go. The height is going to be equal to two multiplied by that surface tension of 0 0.0728 then multiplied by cosine of the contact angle of the water and the glass, that's gonna be zero, okay, zero degrees, then divided by the density of the water, which is 1,000, multiplied by gravity, which is 9.8, multiplied by the radius of the tube, and the radius of the tube, it's in millimeters up there, we gotta convert it into meters, so to simply take that value and divide it by 1,000, all right? And simply now we have our formula, right? It's gonna be two multiplied by 0 0.0728, Cosine of zero is just one, so we can go right to dividing now, the 1,000 times the 9.8 times 0.5 divided by 1,000, right? You could have canceled those thousands if you wanted. And we're gonna have a value in terms of meters here, it's gonna be 0 0.0297, and that's meters, okay? If you wanna convert it into centimeters or millimeters, by all means do so, it doesn't ask for a specific value, so this is indeed a valid answer. Let's take a look at letter B now. So letter B, it says, how much gravitational potential energy does the water gain? All right, so let's just start with the formula, right? So gravitational potential energy, you guys all know what this is, right? This is just going to be mass of the object multiplied by gravity multiplied by its change in height now, or the height it obtained. So if we look at this particular picture, okay, we realize that here's the initial level of the water, basically. And then the water kind of rises up here inside of the small capillary tube due to capillary action. Now, uh, how do we find, so what's important here is we know, the, we, we know the height, but we might have to manipulate that a little bit. We know the gravity, and uh, we don't know the mass right now, but we can calculate the mass, right? It's the mass of the object that has been raised. So if we look at this, you know, tube here, okay? This particular portion of the water that was that was raised up. Let's let's assume, let, let's redraw it on the upper right-hand side, okay? I'm just gonna show that particular portion of this glass, um, of this glass tube. So here's the water, all right? And let's just say that, you know, I'm, I'm doing the analysis, I'm cutting the tube right here, and I'm basically looking at this particular portion. Okay, I'm looking at it relative to the height of the water. Okay, so how do we find the mass of this particular water in this three-dimensional tube? Well, you know that there's a certain volume of water in there, right? So that being the case, you're thinking about, well, how does mass relate to volume? Oh, with this wonderful equation here, right? This equation will tell us that the mass of a fluid will equal the density of that fluid multiplied by the volume of that fluid. So in order for me to find the mass of the fluid in here, the mass of the water, I need the density of the water, which is a known quantity, right? It's a thousand kilogram per cubic meter. And we need to know the volume. Mm, do we know the volume? Well, no, we don't know it directly, but we can figure it out, right? What shape is this thing? Well, we'll, we'll assume it's a tube, so it's cylindrical. So what's the volume of a cylinder? Remember it's pi r squared h, okay? That's the volume of a cylinder. So now to find the mass then, we can say that, well, if this is the volume of a, of a cylindrical object and we know it's filled with water, then the volume of the water here must be equal to the volume of the cylinder, right? That it, based on the height that it has obtained, correct? So that should hopefully make sense. So in this particular picture, right, the height here is gonna be the height from the top part of the water all the way down to the bottom, all right? This is our H here. So let's plug that in now. So it's the density of the water multiplied by pi, r squared h. 
All right, so hopefully that's cool. So this will be now the formula for the mass of the water, okay? So let's start plugging this in now for m in my equation, all right? So now let's do this. So it's the potential energy due to gravity is the mass of the water, and the, the mass of the water is this whole column. All right, keep that in mind there. It's that whole column. So it's going to be now the density of the water. Actually, you know what? Let me give myself a little more room. Just give me one second. Move this on over slightly. And let me move this too. I'm going to move the arrow with it. Okay. Let's just move that arrow back. Okay. So now we can start plugging in all the values here, right? So the density for mass, we're going to substitute in the density of the water. Multiplied by then pi. Multiplied then by the radius of the tube squared, right? Uh, which is essentially just the radius of the water there. Multiplied by then the total height of that water. Okay, I'll just say the height of the tube here. Which, by the way, we calculated over, over here, right? This value, in terms of, just so we're clear, this value, the height that the water obtained, is going to be the difference between the topmost part of the water and where the water is essentially in the container. All right, this is the height that we obtained in part A. All right, so this part here for the mass should hopefully be good. Then this thing is then going to be multiplied by gravity. That's fine. And then it's also going to be multiplied by the height. Now, here's the thing, though, right? When you're talking about potential energy, this height is really talking about a point mass, more or less. For example, take a look at this picture over here. The molecules of water that live at the bottom here, did they increase with the same amount of potential energy as the molecules of water that are up there? Well, no, right? Your answer to me should be no, because they have different heights. So then we're going to say, well, wait, what the hell? How in the world are we going to do this, right? How in the world, if all these molecules, and there's billions and billions, trillions and trillions of molecules in this thing, and they all have different heights, how are we actually going to calculate this? Well... There's a nice simplifying assumption that works out pretty well. We can just take the average height here. Okay, the average height, meaning the, the height we found in part A and divide it by two. All right, in order to talk about the height gained by the water. Okay, so the height gained by the water on average should be then the height value we found before and then dividing it by two. Why is that the case? Well, you can kind of think about it. Uh, a water molecule here would have gained a certain amount of potential energy, and a water molecule here would have gained another certain amount of potential energy. But averaged out, if you had to average those two stars, right, I'm going to say that this is three quarters of the way up, this is a quarter of the way up. If you average those two out, you're going to average it out to 50% of the way up. All right? So hopefully that kind of makes sense. So that's why in terms of our height here, in terms of the potential energy formula, we really have to take then the height the fluid obtained and divide it by two, all right, so that we have uh, the appropriate value, okay? Because not all of those molecules obtained the same height. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so now what we can do is we can now go and plug in the or actually, why don't we simplify some stuff now, right? So we can simplify a couple of things. Let's see what we can do. So we have the potential energy of gravity will then be equal to the, uh, so density of water, that looks like pressure, right? Density of the water times pi times the radius of the tube squared times gravity and then times, I'm basically just combining these two heights because I can combine them to make h squared all over two, okay? So now we should have enough uh, firepower to be able to uh, finish this on out, okay? So let's do this. So now plug in the values. So the density of water is 1,000. Pi is pi. The radius of the tube was going to be 0.5 over 1,000 because we needed meters. All right, square that. Gravity is 9.8. And then the height... Uh, that it obtained, right, that the water obtained was going to be 0 0.0297, all divided then by 2. Okay. Um, and oops, 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 I was just looking, right? That should be squared at the in, in the numerator. So now let's just calculate. So the potential energy due to gravity here, 
the potential energy change will be now 1000 multiplied by pi multiplied by point in parentheses 0.5 divided by 1000 squared times then 9.8 times then 0 0.0297 squared divided by 2. And here we get a value now of about uh, 3.39 3.39 times 10 raised to the negative 6 times 10 raised to the negative 6 and that will be in terms of joules since we're talking about energy. All right, and we know we used all standard units. And then last part, it says, you know, discuss the possible sources of this energy. So, you know, if you're thinking about in terms of this picture over here, in order for the water to rise on up, there must be some net force, you know, pushing the water on up. All right. Now, net force, if, 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 you, if you come to that conclusion, which you should, right, there's some net force pushing the water up. How else was it, how else was it going up? Um, we can then start to find the possible sources of this force. Now, remember, force is in newtons. So if you look in your equation here for the capillary action, uh, what variable has newtons in it? Or what var variable deals with force? Uh, surface tension, right? Take a look at the units over here, newtons per meter. So basically, short answer here is that the surface tension of water is actually providing the force necessary to increase the height um, of the water in this tube. All right. So guys, hopefully that makes sense. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Take care.